This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Your IT skills are outdated in about 18 months. Stay ahead of the curve and strengthen your IT expertise with affordable certification-based learning that will launch or advance your career. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. You know, Tell you what I say. This what do you is the say? golden age of antitrust, and I love it. I, <laughs> no, you I, don't. I can't no, you get don't. enough of don't antitrust. Lie. You hate Lena Khan. No, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I love everything about it. I there's a is a topic that's going to come up twice today, which is a definition of market, right? So one of the tools that antitrust regulators have when they try to charge, in this case, like a big tech company with abusing a monopoly or whatever it might be is that they can narrowly or broadly define a market as they wish to prove their point, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, you could say Apple has a 100% monopoly on app distribution on iOS. It's true, right? There's the market. Pretty much. To which Apple would say, yeah, but hold on a second. We're only uh, some percentage of the broader market for smartphones. And um, we're not even the biggest maker of smartphones. Samsung is. So Mm -hmm. what the heck? Not the (laughs) largest uh, uh, operating system. If you actually combine all the Androids, like. Yeah. So anyway, the, 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 the definition of a market is kind of what you want it to be. It's like lying with data. You can, you can define it however you want. So obviously the company involved is going to try to define in this case to to define a market broadly to make themselves look smaller. And, um, the antitrust regulator will try to define it uh, narrowly to make it look like you're, you're more dominant than you are. So with that idea in mind, <laughs> uh, the EU announced this past, I think it was last Friday, probably mm-hmm. late last week, that they are indeed going to go forward with a formal investigation into Microsoft bundling teams into with Office. It's actually in Microsoft 365, right, in, in the um, subscription offerings. They actually don't care about standalone versions of Office. So if you go to a retail store like it's the 1990s and you buy a copy of Office, nobody cares about that. Can you do that? Um, I don't even think you can do I, that. I don't know. <laughs> It's like, I've heard people do it. I, I don't know. Um, I think the most common way to buy a standalone version of Office today, honestly, is like some online discount thing where you can get like a uh, a lifetime access to Office 2021 for just $39 or $49 or whatever the nonsense is. Right. You can only install it one computer. It's it's never updated like the Microsoft 365 versions of the app. It's not really a great deal. But some people, you know, Steve Gibson's in this conversation kind of <laughs> still prefer that. It's, I'm not, you know, I'm not dumping on uh, it. It's, just, it's not what I would do, but. Give me my media, dang it. <laughs> yeah. So three years ago, Slack, right before they were purchased by um, Salesforce, literally mm-hmm. less than six months before, I believe, uh, issued a, a complaint to the European Commission asking them to investigate Microsoft for this exact business uh, practice. I've written an extensive um Kind of rebuttal <laughs> to this whole right. thing but the the idea here is that the easy the, the european commission is not saying that microsoft's guilty that will come later if it happens right now they are going to assess whether microsoft may have breached eu competition rules in their words by tying or bundling teams with its popular suites for uh office well office 365 and microsoft 365 right um so this again, I think, comes down to this kind of definition of market. Like, what's the market yeah. here? Why? Why is um, it, a bundle is a bundle? Why is Teams just not part of the bundle like everything else? Like, how are you discriminating these two things? Yeah. You're so the way you playing that words in there. Yeah. No. So, I mean, well, uh, uh, monopoly and antitrust is all about size, right? So, if you are the dominant player in a market, if you have a monopoly or are, are otherwise dominant, because again, everything in mm-hmm. antitrust is pretty squishy. Um, you are beholden to different rules than an up and coming yeah. co- small company, you know? Uh, so in like this market, Slack was a small player. Um, it still has a minority market share compared to teams or I should say usage share, right? The number of seats or whatever it is out in the world. Yeah. Um, there are lots of parallels between this case and the Microsoft antitrust stuff of the late nineties, early two thousands, right? Bundling internet Explorer with windows, right. same idea. We're trying to get into this new market. Uh, we're bundling uh, to get ahead. We're leveraging this dominant product that we have. It sounds very similar, but man, does this thing fall apart when you really look at it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, and and I hope the EU looks at it to this degree. So among the problems with this case is that Teams is not actually a brand new thing that Microsoft created because it heard of something called Slack. Although 
that certainly was an inspiration for them to go in a certain direction with the functionality. Teams they is did the successor. They did try and buy Slack at one point. They did, which, by the way, also speaks to that's a thing that monopolies try to do, right? Mm -hmm. They tried to buy uh, Netscape, too, by the way. And when mm -hmm. that failed, they went to the bundling thing. So that's actually a parallel, and that's an important one to remember. But Microsoft had solutions dating back over 20-something years that were this product. Link, Skype for Business, et cetera, et cetera. Like, uh, the original name of teams, if I'm not mistaken, I think was Skype teams. I think that was the original internal name for this product. Right. Um, and to your point, when Microsoft tried to, I was talking about buying Slack, I think it, for about $8 billion, Bill Gates was one of the big voices that said, are you crazy? You have everything in place that you need to beat this thing right now. To make you it. Don't have, yeah. it, it. You already have it. Um, the other thing is that Slack and Microsoft 365 commercial, largely target different segments of the market. That is mm -hmm. most of the revenues and most of the companies that Microsoft attracts are what I would call fortune 500 or mm -hmm. enterprise type businesses where Slack gets into that part of the market. I don't have a good name for this, but it's new and small businesses. It's the people who are younger, who came up in a world where they were using Google services at school mm -hmm. and probably Google devices, frankly, like Chromebooks and things like that. And they are doing this kind of ad hoc thing where they're like, I'm going to use notion because it's free or cheap. I'm going to use Slack because it's free or cheap, depending on, you know, the size of your company. Yep. They don't look at big infrastructure like Microsoft has, right? Yeah. So you can make this argument. Yeah. I mean, they, they bundled teams with Microsoft 365, no doubt about it. They bundled a bunch of things into Microsoft 365 that never garnered a response from anybody or a complaint yes. from anybody, but whatever. Um, they already had something that wasn't called teams that was teams before. Right. So they've always had a communication collaboration slice yeah. in there. Um, way before Slack ever existed. You could argue, I mean, Slack's big uh, innovation. I'm not saying they invented it, but the thing that they rode to success on was that younger people prefer more immediate forms of communication collaboration. Right. Whereas older people prefer email, right? So one of the, the central disconnects between a, a company like uh, that would be a Microsoft shop and a company that might be a Slack shop is, is that kind of age experience difference. You know, and, and when you get the, as old as me, you don't want to hear from anybody at all in any form. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. You start <laughs> off notifications, right? Yeah. That's the, yeah, that's the third level. That's the next level of marketing. Uh, hey, what? So, <laughs> right. Why did my phone make a sound? I, I thought I turned that all off. Um, so uh, one of the, I think the big successes of Teams, um, aside from the, oh, I, and I should say one of the other big differences between Teams and Slack is that. Yeah, the first version of Teams was very much like Slack, a sort of a chat-focused collaboration tool that built off the stuff they already had. But very, very quickly, this thing uh, added so much more functionality. It's a yeah. full platform. It runs apps. It's a completely different kind of thing. I actually think, and this is where the definition market comes in, I don't think these things compete in the same market. I really yeah, don't. I don't I think they compete with each other. Um, the, the pace of innovation, the amount of innovation that Microsoft demonstrated, and I, and by the way, before the pandemic, like the pandemic was absolutely, I've described it this way so many times, Stephen Rose and I had this conversation mm -hmm. about, and, and I mean in 2020, that the pandemic would and did act as an accelerant for industry trends that were already happening. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, in Microsoft's case, they did a tremendous job of bringing in this new type of solution, the Slack type of solution, into their productivity suite that could integrate with the way people were already doing things. And so you could have these organizations full of younger and older people, and we could collaborate on the same projects in the way that we preferred. It's, it's kind of a, it, it's honestly a, a form of, in, of innovation of its own kind of, of its own kind. Mm -hmm. The thing is the, the EU in this case called out COVID. They actually made a point that COVID played a big role in this. The reason being that uh, teams usage exploded during COVID and Slack usage did not, not to the same degree. So the numbers I found was in March, 2020, right at the start of the March, 2020 is when you were right. trying to get home beginning, from my house in the, yeah, the, the beginning of the lockdowns. Night. Yep. There were 44 million teams users. Um, so that's 2017. That's in six years. They got to 44 million users, right? The world locked down in 2020. Since then, and, th and this is three years, Microsoft's added another 256 million users. So there's over 300 million users of this thing. Right. Um, I got, I, let me see if I can find the figure for Slack. 
uh da, 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 da. where is it i can't find it's it, a but fraction I have a there. so though, that's it's a point. small fra yeah yeah, yeah yeah uh no here it is uh numbers have been million? because different people no it's it's somewhere between 30 and 40 million okay daily active users so the, it went up but here's the thing covid was that thing that lifted a lot of boats and the yep. tech's fear it is fascinating to me that some companies benefited greatly zoom for example Huge. And some yeah. didn't. And Slack is one of the ones that didn't. And mm -hmm. so when you look at like what happened with Slack, first of all, they were purchased by Salesforce before the pandemic. So they have all the resources of a ginormous company. Yeah. Just like AOL purchased Netscape, kind of undercutting the we can't compete thing. Well, if you can't compete, then why were you worth uh, whatever billion you were worth to yeah. Salesforce? And it was multiple billions, by the way, whatever it was. Um, uh, did, uh, yeah, AOL bought Netscape in, uh, oh, that's the wrong here. Um, and it doesn't matter for $4.2 billion during the Microsoft trial. Um, Salesforce bought Slack in 2020 for $28 billion. That right. is over three times the amount Microsoft was going to pay for it three years earlier. Yeah. It grew in value enormously. Yeah. I, all of these things. I, See, I it, tell me where you're sad, you know, yeah, I don't that hurt you. I mean, that being said, the EU should do the investigation. I just suspect the investigation yes. should come back and say, tough luck, buttercup. This is, Yes. Uh, in the same way, look, um, the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal was a huge, is, is a huge thing. It needs yes. regulatory oversight. It, it, every one of those agencies needed to do it. And they even did. the 10 year thing is not a bad idea. Like declare yes. that you really are, you're going to address this. Honestly, that's pl what's platform gonna, problem. That's what's going to push it through. Yeah. So on the, um, but this is same thing. I, I, I feel strongly this needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at it, I came up with all that nonsense I disputed. So I, I, I sort of looked at all the points they were making, the questions they were asking, and there's probably more in the article. It's a huge article, but, um, you know, it, it, there's, there's a lot of kind of back and forth, but I mean, th ultimately I think, you know, did Microsoft create teams because of Slack? Yes. Yep. There's no, there's nothing wrong with. Well, and also that their customers wanted a collaborative yes. tool, right? Yep. I mean, that's why yep. they were considering buying it in the first place. We need a collaborative tool. The central harm to Slack's business, I guess, is that Microsoft, by not charging extra for Teams, right, is giving companies an incentive not to spend extra on Slack because we already get this thing for free. So even if it's not as good, it, you know, that's there's an anti-competitive element to that, and that's fair. Right. The problem is Teams is much better than Slack. It's much bigger than Slack. At least it's, <laughs> it's it is it's now. More, it's more akin to the type of solution that managed enterprises would want. Yes. Because and they, and it they are in, reacting to their customers. That's right. It fits in nicely with the entire ecosystem that is Microsoft 365. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, like I said, an apps platform now. It is, you know, it does, it's it's a you know a floor wax and a and a dessert, dessert topping. topping. Yes. And yeah. It, it really it, is. Yeah. And it like we've done shows on Dev for Slack, like your ability to add functionality to it to customize the way you want to, like. Yeah, you it, it happens to also be a chat tool. Yes. But that's not right. its principal right. thing. We saw this thing that people liked in Slack, and we said, that's interesting. We have this whole suite of collaboration and communication experiences, which at this time were called Skype for Business. Mm -hmm. We could add that feature. This is the thing I always said, you know, Call of Duty, right? The biggest shooter for you know 15 years running or whatever. And then all of a sudden, these battle royale games showed up. Yeah. PUBG. And then the big mm -hmm. one, Fortnite. Fortnite yeah. just destroyed the market. Yes. And, and they weren't the, the first. You know, PUBG no, they weren't the first, first, but for some reason that one landed, right? Yeah. And so I from as the from the perspective of a Call of Duty user, which in this case is the Microsoft 365 side of this fence, I said, and I said, and they did, I said, what is this? Why is this even big? This isn't a game, it's a feature. Hmm. This is a <laughs> is a type of game they could easily add to Call of Duty and have it be one of the 117 types of games you can play within Call of Duty. By the way, that's exactly what they did. It's called Warzone. They right. give it away for free, just like Microsoft does with standalone mm -hmm. teams if you want it. And it's part of this bigger thing called Call of Duty that you pay for. So here's this giant thing that's expensive that has Warzone as a feature competing sort of against this thing called Fortnite, which is free, which is like Slack, a small thing, you know? And I'm sorry, like, so is, uh, did uh, Activision Blizzard le leverage some dominance they have in the first person shooter market and blah, 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 blah. Yes. But they haven't beaten Fortnite, <laughs> interestingly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, Warzone is hugely successful. I don't know the numbers, but it, it, there's a millions and millions of people play this thing every single day. 
Yeah. But it has not defeated Fortnite. No. So what's the difference between Fortnite and Slack? Aside from the fact that Fortnite is free. It's that that those people continue innovating. And this is the thing where Netscape dropped the ball in the browser wars that people don't like to talk about because it's all about abuse. But I feel like Slack dropped the ball too. When when Microsoft yeah. made the teams more than Slack, Slack kept Slack, Slack. And yeah, that's one way to compete. I'm sure some people like that small little one thing does one thing type solution. Ad well, hoc, now that whatever. they've had six years inside of Salesforce, but like they really yep. have no excuse. You're on a platform yeah. that actually needed all that capability too. Right, right. So yeah, I mean, uh, Microsoft is dominant in the space. I agree with that. Uh, they did bundle the product, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I I think that the differences in the markets that they actually yeah. target is- I would argue their customers expect the product suite to keep growing. That's why they pay every month. Exactly. Exactly. That's the central promise of it. We just talked yep. about standalone office, right? Mm -hmm. Why would anyone do this? One of the things you don't get with standalone office is all the functional updates. Yes. Microsoft literally updates all parts of office and office 365 and Microsoft 365 every single month. Yeah. When you well, buy standalone almost, office, well, you almost weekly. Updates. Yeah. It's crazy. That's the promise of it. That's why people pay that fee. Yeah. And, um, or it's one of the reasons, right? Uh, Slack does it. I don't you know. Slack, I'm sure Slack improves. I don't mean it like that, but. Slack is this, it's a really narrow product that does one specific thing and only small companies would ever gravitate towards something like that because you don't pick stuff out of the air and choose this for this, this for this, mm -hmm. and kind of hope they all integrate when you're a big company. You just don't. Yeah. That, that's not of interest. That's yeah. The, 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 the customers want one throat to choke, right? They <laughs> want it to go. come <laughs> from one place. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Anyway. So that, that's happening. I, like Richard said, I, I, I don't know that I would say I expect, but I think the proper outcome of this investigation is to say that, yes, Microsoft exhibited some of the expected behaviors of a dominant, uh, you know, party in a business. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Slack made mistakes that the, the definition of the market that these two products compete in, which I think is the most important, but frankly, is um, completely different. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I'm trying to think of it. You can write words with notepad or you can write words with Microsoft word. Do they compete with each other? I know they're both Microsoft products, mm -hmm. you know, not exactly, but you know, Slack is to notepad as teams is to word. Of course, it's a much more powerful, complete package with more features and it does a lot more. Yeah. So that's my take. Yeah. It's going to be a failure to compete. You don't, and you don't get to use Andy competitive because you failed to compete. Yeah, I, I right. Uh, uh, failing to even try to compete I, mm -hmm. might be their biggest sin, you know, because I, I feel like that's what happened. But yeah, yeah that's my take on it. I use, by the way, I use Slack and Teams every single day. Yep. I I like Slack for what it is. I sure. is wish I didn't have. Is it a mistake to say that it's only Slack or only Sony in the Activision thing? I mean, could is it, it a also be, well, I'm, I'm saying, could well, it also be the anti competitiveness? stifles any new competitor as well i mean it's i mean yeah. aren't they supposed well, to be looking uh, at that too i mean it's not so uh, you know <laughs> so, so, uh, oh, so many things come to mind i'll just use one example that one, one quickie one um microsoft got into trouble with antitrust uh, not with sorry with antivirus vendors when they started talking about it and then implementing an antivirus and anti-malware in windows right um, yeah, microsoft better. through its uh, inaction created a, a huge business for companies like Norton and Symantec and whatever else to come out with products that fixed the problem that Microsoft created in Windows. Um, they went back and forth on this for a while. I suspect there was there was some uh, financial something, something that happened. But the basic deal was that these companies, by the way, still exist. There's almost no reason if what you need is uh, spyware, malware, you know, virus, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, control in Windows to buy a product. So why do they still exist? What's the, there's, how could they be there? We already have this in Windows. It's because they expanded into other areas of security and privacy. Uh, right. And they offer a bunch of other functionality. I don't personally need or want that kind of thing. I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't like the overhead of it. But to some people, a lot of people, these businesses are doing pretty good. Um, uh, it's a, it, that's an option for you, right? You can buy McAfee, well, whatever Well, that's it is. the platform model. And I think if mm -hmm. you said Microsoft was a pure platform play, and didn't no, no, but let me, end but let me, user let me, products, let me, they would do even better. They would be even more stimulating to the economy. I guess what I'm saying is when Microsoft turned Teams into a platform, 
Slack's response was to do nothing. Right. Right. So like, if you just want to keep doing the old thing right. where your entire product is a feature of something that Microsoft gives away for free as part of Microsoft 365, I mean, God love you. There is a market out there for Slack. And that yeah. market is that small business thing I was talking about. Startups, new businesses, small businesses. Whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I work with Most folks that are using the Google suite for stuff and they use Slack as their, as their chat and clap too. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Right. And that's what I'm saying. You're, you're kind of picking it. It, if Google were to add a Slack like feature to G or a workspace, the G Suite, they yeah, probably have actually, but whatever. Um, Slack could not sue them because Slack or Google does not have a dominant position in this market in any market you choose to uh, define there, right? Uh, they're a minority player in pro in office productivity or whatever. Um, so uh, it's stupid for Google not to. I wouldn't be surprised to discover they already have. I actually don't know, but um, I don't care either. I'm not, I'm not, I would never use that, but th yes, but. Uh, workspace is a great example of the same type of business that small mm -hmm. businesses are looking at. They're like, I'm going to use these guys for email and documents. Maybe I'm going to use these guys. Like I might use notion for note taking. I'm going to take Slack for collaboration. And I've, I've collected these ad hoc tools that probably have some integration pieces for sure, but they're not as deeply integrated as that one. When, when neck to choke as he would at the, you know, the Microsoft full stack, mm -hmm. Uh, infrastructure, you know, essential service sitting there on the back end. I think these are different things. I mean, yeah. those businesses they, are going to grow up, by the way, and they may, it's possible that the um, uh, app service providers that they use will grow with them, right? I, I really question um, what's the remedy at this point, too. Slack has already been acquired. You're really going to, you know, so, charge Microsoft uh, to find like this is where does this go? Yeah, so this is based, uh, I, I don't want to call it rumors, because I, I believe it was the Financial Times that reported this two, three months ago. But apparently, um, when this was a sort of a, a smaller, uh, not unofficial, but not the formal, informal investigation, we'll, we'll call it, you know, they alerted Microsoft and uh, Microsoft said, what's the problem? And they said, well, you know, you're doing this thing to Slack. I mean, well, we'll okay, what do you want us to do? And they were like, raise the cost of Office when you include uh, Teams. So Microsoft was like, all right. And they sent in a submission where they said, we will raise it by this much. And the EU said, that's not enough. And that's why this formal investigation started because mm. they couldn't reach a settlement ahead of time. They just couldn't reach. It was a number. And so if that's true, and I think it is, you know, based on the source, um, that means that it was, it basically came down to a per user monthly dollar amount, essentially. Right. Um, the difference in price between a version of Microsoft 365 without Teams and one with Teams was not enough. Yeah. And by the way, are we who are we helping here? So you're going to help a competitor in, by raising the price of a product to customers. Hmm. I, I, I mean, okay. yeah. And by I the way, remember when you when antitrust was about harm to the, to the consumer. Depends, you know, right. it's so a matter of perspective. The EU yeah. is heavily on um, com competition. They want fair competition above consumer, but mm -hmm. yeah, uh, above, yeah, above, you like user, huh? yeah. Right. So yeah, little, little pro, little con there, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I think that's insane.